Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Evidence and in today's video I am going to show you how to export and save data frame to CSV. So this is the documentation we are going to be using and I'm going to add this documentation in the comment section below. But today's video I am going to cover how to add a file path to save your CSV, how to change the separator from comma to something else, how to replace missing values, how to choose which columns to save. So you don't have to save all your columns. You can just choose which columns you want to save, how to create different headers for resulting data. So you can create an alias for the column names, um, how to remove or rename the index, how to do chunk size writing. So sometimes you have a million rows of data and you want to write it to CSV using 200 lines at a time, and then how to save your CSV to a zipped folder. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. To begin, we are just gonna convert a data frame to CSV, and here I'm gonna do df.head, so you know what the data looks like beforehand. So this is just a data frame with a single row, and the way this works is that if you don't provide a path to save the CSV file, then the output, output is a string. So if we go down and run this, as you can see, th this is the output from converting this data frame into a CSV. And this is because we didn't provide a, we didn't provide a path. And as soon, I don't know if you noticed this, but it has um, comma then comma right here. So this empty, commas right here represent this NANs. So whenever you have NAN, the default is just to put an empty comma or an empty line, right? So to save this file, to save this as a CSV file, you have to provide a file path. So here I'm calling it dfdata.csv. And if we go down run this, and if you look up here, and if you look here now, we have a CSV file called dfdata.csv, which is the name we gave it here. If we go ahead and open this, as you can see, this is the CSV file. This is the default of what it looks like. And we have the same thing here of like empty CSV files. So as you can see here, the default separator is the comma. You can choose to have a different separator like the semicolon. If we go ahead and run this. And as you can see now, the separator has been changed from comma to semicolon. You can also change how missing data is represented. All right. So in this situation, we are replacing this empty data representation with none. So if we go down and run this, as you can see right here, instead of having a semicolon, instead of having a comma, an empty and a comma empty, you have comma none, comma none. So this way you have accurate representation of your missing data. You can also specify which columns you want to turn into a CSV. So if we look at what we have here, by default, all the columns are turned into a CSV, right? But if you wanted to just pick a few columns, you can also do that. So if we run this, as you can see right here, instead of having all the columns turned into a CSV, you just have a few columns. So I don't know if you notice this, it has um, an empty data, then comma. This empty data, then comma is the index, right? The data frame has in, in its own index. So this empty, then comma is where the index was. But back to this, we have number of songs, artist name, title, and year. And then we have new line, and then we have the corresponding data. So you can choose which columns to turn into a CSV. So you can remove the index. Remember when I told you that this empty string right here, this empty location before the first comma is the index? Well, you can remove that index. Including the index is the default behavior. So to remove the index, we are gonna do that next. So if we go down and run this, if we go to df 2com as you can see here, including the index is the default behavior. So we have um, an empty 
data right here. Then we have the column names. And then we have the index zero. We have the values. Um, index one, we have the values. Index two, we have the values. Index three, we have the values, so forth and so on. This is the default behavior. So to remove the index, we just add index equal to false. So it's the same code as this, but the only difference now is that we have specified the index to be false. And let's go ahead and run this. And we have a new file called df3 data.csv. And if we look at it, as you can see, the index is gone. We just have the column names. And then we have the data corresponding to those column name, to those columns. As you can see here, this is with index. This is without index. So you can specify to include, include or remove the index on your CSV file. You can also give the index a different name. For example, if you don't want to remove the index, but you want the index to have a different name, you can also do that. So if we go and run this, and here we have um, df4data.csv. As you can see here, we have test index, right? So before we just have, when you have the index included, which is the default, you just have nothing right here for the index name. But with this, you can uh, give a name to the index. So instead of having nothing, you have test index, then you have the index, then the values for the data. And that's done by just adding the index level right here. So you can also create an alias and different headers for your columns. When we did, uh, when we worked on the columns earlier, if we go back here, as you can see right here, we chose which specific columns to turn into a CSV file. Here you can choose the specific columns you want for your CSV file and you are going to give it different names. So for this, we are going to change number of songs to NS and artist name to A and so forth and so on. If we go ahead and write this to CSV. And let's go to dfdata.csv. As you can see right here, instead of having number of songs, artist name, title, year, for the different column names, you can have something like NSANTLYR. So you could rename your columns while converting your data frame into a CSV. So you can also um, specify the chunk size for when writing your data. So why is chunk size important? If let's say for example, you have 1 million rows of data and you think writing all 1 million rows of data is gonna crash your IPython kernel, you can do chunk size data writing, basically here you will specify um, your far path. Here I'm gonna put the index as false and here I'm gonna put chunk size equal to 20. So even though there are multiple rows in this data, it's gonna write this um, 20 lines at a time. Let's call this one DF5 for simplicity and if we go and run this, Oh, this is chunk size, not chunk size. <laughs> Let's go down and run this. So after looking at the documentation, I got the correct spelling. It's chunk size. All right. <laughs> it's like, don't spell this wrong. It's a throw an error. So chunk size equal to 20 and we run it and it works. And we have a new data called DF5. And it's the same data, you know, nothing special about it. It's just that this data was written 20 lines at a time. And you won't be able to notice the difference if you have a small data set of like 72 rows. But if you have a data set that has like 100,000 or a million rows, you'll notice the difference. If you try to write a million rows at once, it might crash your computer. But if you do it, let's say 200 lines at a time, then it will work without crashing your computer. And last but not least, we are going to talk about saving your CSV file to zip folder. So saving to um, a compressed zip folder is actually um, very simple. So here, the first thing we are going to define 
is um, the compression option. So here we are saying that the method is zip and the archive name is df2data.csv. And uh, here we are doing df 2 to csv right? And then we are doing df2data.zip, index is equal to false, and then compression is equal to compression options. So what's going to happen here is like, when I run this, it is going to create a zip folder called df2data.zip. And then inside this folder called df2data.zip is going to be a file called df 2 data csv so let me just call this um i don't know df this df6 um just to so you don't make you don't confuse the names and you can put different things here for the method but for this i've just used zip and i'm just gonna run this and as you can see right here we have a new folder called df2 data.zip I'm going to unzip this and we are going to look at the file inside it. So I'm here in JSON lesson, which is a folder. And we have a file, a folder called df2data.zip. And I'm going to unzip this. And there is the unzipped folder. And if we go back to VS Code here. Uh, so this is the unzipped folder. Where is it? Um, df2data. And inside df2data is the file df6 and this is the data in df6 right it doesn't have any index so you could also zip up your csv file anyway that's it for this video thank you for watching to get access to this notebook that I used in today's video. You can go online at machinelearningeducation.com slash free. And I'm gonna put the link in the description below. And here you will get access to these notebooks and many other notebooks. So I create a lot of tutorial content in data science and in tech. And I just find it easier to put all that content into a single location. So if you go to machinelearningeducation.com slash free, you get access to this notebook and many other notebooks. And you can also visit me online at evidencen.com. This is my personal website. We have data science blog posts. And as time goes by, I'm going to create more and more data science um, blog posts. So that's evidencen.com. And once you are here, you can click on appreciate and support this blog to support me directly or you can go to machinelearningeducation.com and here you can click on support my work to support me directly and also if you come to this website and i've changed it and the home page is no longer this you can there's gonna be a link up here that says support my work so you can always click on that link to support me directly that's it for this video i hope you liked it please give it a thumbs up Subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think in the comment section and share this video with other people who's going to find it helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.